Um, all right, we had reports about the amnesty report That's right. about human rights abuses. Um, some people are saying that it is not as it's being portrayed, um, that things are looking good now. Now, as an opposition leader, what is your reaction to this human rights report? I think we've had uh, one or two human rights reports or reports bordering on the current situation in Sierra Leone. The EU reports, there is an Amnesty International. There is a State Department report as well. Mm -hmm. And then we also had some discussions with the uh, National Democratic Institution. They also have their own views of what was happening. I don't think it is accurate to say things are improving in Sierra Leone at this material time. It depends also, for me, on who provides information to some of these institutions, mm. whether it is uh, NGOs or other reporters. It depends on where they're coming from, whether they're sympathizers of the current administration or they're in the opposition or they are working for Sierra Leone. I would rather prefer reports that are based on the welfare of the typical Sierra Leoneans. So for, for, for a typical Sierra Leonean, what do you think the actual situation is? That definition of what is improving, I don't know. But my current situation is that we have two sets of challenges in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. We have those challenges that are of a long-standing nature, where up till today as a nation, after 60 years of independence, we cannot feed ourselves. We don't have drinkable water. We, have still, we still continue to have poor roads. And then we cannot light up our towns, our villages, and our cities. Uh, we still have serious poverty strides, extreme poverty. Now, these are the long-standing uh, 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 challenges of macroeconomic instability, of structural bottlenecks, and, and of finance, financing the government, financing the country's development program. Then you have today's own typical challenges, which are a creation of the government. For instance, we have a lot of divisiveness in the country. Mm. There's a certain tendency to polarize the country within, on a regional and ethnic basis. What do you say to those critics of yours who said you're, you were part of an administration that indeed, ruled indeed I was. Sierra Leone for 10 years, two consecutive terms, indeed. and that if the country is now experiencing such challenges, that could be attributed to your government, previous government, uh, because you were you ruled the country for 10 years. I know. Uh, and that the fundamentals of the economy, your administration at that time did not put it right to ensure a positive trajectory of Sierra Leone at the moment. So who is to blame? I think for, it did. I mm. think it did. There was massive improvement. Mm. There were improvements. I can tell I can give you a historical trajectory of Sierra Leone, where we've come from since independence by five-year period, by decades. We've gone through difficult times. We had the 10 years, we have the, the, the 10 to 11 years war. We did not bring the war, not, it was not the APC war. It evolved. And then we managed to move out of that, or we emerged out of it. Difficulty. I was there in Sierra Leone, in the Minister of Finance. Okay? And then we had the peace agreement in 2002. And we had phases of, 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 of development uh, 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 interventions. Pakaba came five years, 2002 to 2007. I was there as financial secretary. I know exactly what we did. It was a time when we had to go back into governance issues. When we had to build institutions. Through that, we were able to, 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 to sort of encourage, to incite international institutions to come back to Sierra Leone. We made that improvement. Now, some people are saying mm -hmm. that your party itself is not united. You need to unite your party first before it's you can party unite. It's united now. More than <laughs> before ever. Before you can unite the country. So, it's so, so what, what makes you the most qualified to, uni to unite Sierra Leone? I'm not using the Giving party. Giving the opportunity. I'm not using the party. Okay. I'm using myself as Samura Kamara, a Sierra Leonean. Okay. A Samura Kamara 
who cuts across all the tribes in Sierra Leone, mm. with all friends all over. Yesterday, I had a video conference with the Creole Descendants Union. Mm. And it was very clear about my relationship with the Creoles. Mm. My relationship in the Southeast, my wife is from the Southeast, is from Pujeum. Mm. Pujeum? From Pujeum, Masangbaka, okay. okay. Rogers. Mm -hmm. You understand? I've grown up with them. And I've been with my wife for over 40 years. Mm. My children are half men, they have Timni. Samura Kamara's, in the way, manner of speaking, is uniquely from the north as well as from the, from the east. Mm. I went to school in Bo, so I'm also from the south. You went to Bo Boys? No, no. I okay. went to St. Andrews, you okay. see. I went there. Mm. So, honestly, I have a very strong affiliation in the southeast. Mm. Now, the north, that's where my parents come from. In the west, I went to second. I went to secondary school or Saint Edward Secondary School. Then I went to university at Farabay College. Farabay College. I have a diversity of friends, and really, it is very difficult for anybody to pinpoint Samura Kamara as a travelist, as as a, 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 somebody who encourages ethnicity, ethnic divide, and all the rest of it. I I heard your campaign team saying that you will change policy to be Western focused, to have a deeper relations with Washington, uh, to attract foreign investors to Sierra Leone. How do you intend doing that? That is not only to attract investment. It's to project international foreign relations in such a manner that you have a very good balance. Whether you want aid from them, or whether you have to borrow from them, or whether you have to encourage private foreign investment from them. It's a very good trajectory. You have to balance that. Now, you have to improve the investment climate in Sierra Leone. You have to look at the laws. Investors have to be seen that they are seriously pol uh, 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 protected. The political situation is very important. Where you have a tense political environment, it's very difficult for a serious investor to come in. You have the rules that fly by night. Yes, of course, briefcase investors. where well, they will come and try just to exploit an unstable situation. You have mm. them. Mm. But where you have a seriously managed economy with strong, predictable economic policies, mm. good taxation policies, good incentives, mm -hmm. a good rapport, a good dialogue with investors, I think investors are looking for that type of climate. Mm. So talking about the investment climate, what specifically will you put in place that you yeah. think will encourage local investors and will be, um, how should I say, a catalyst for foreign investors to come to Sierra Leone? For local investors, their biggest constraint is capital, mm. is financing. Because these are small to medium-sized uh, businesses. You need to help them. Mm. The majority of them, really speaking, they're in the informal economy. Mm -hmm. But they're providing a very good function. The Abacha street traders, the Victoria street traders, the market women, the market men, the small traders. They're all over. They need serious attention by the government. Yes, microfinance, microcredits. We have overused the terminology microcredits. But you need to tap a type of financing that will actually generate growth in their businesses that will protect them. For the foreign investors, this is what I've just told you. Corruption, they don't want to partner with those who are corrupt, people who are corrupt. Yes. How would you handle it? Give me the steps you will take. One, to address corruption, and two, to make these investors, both local and foreign, comfortable enough to yes. want to invest and create jobs if, for if, your people. If it is the affair for corruption, mm -hmm. then it means we have to challenge anti-corruption seriously. I am uh, I have a zero tolerance for corruption. Mm -hmm. And I will pursue that. I will make sure in my administration and beyond, we really, really try to project an image of credibility, mm -hmm. a non-corrupt image. If Sierra Leoneans decide that you are going to be the next president by reposing confidence in you and voting for you. Within the first 100 days in office, what will they see you do to improve their lives? You know, as I told you, you have long-standing challenges of infrastructure. 
many of these feeding yourselves and all of that, they require short to medium to longer term perspectives. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have these problems of today. Uniting Sierra Leone, giving the right messages to Sierra Leoneans that I am here not to serve APC alone. I'm here not to serve Samura Kamara as a Timney or not to serve Samura Kamara's wife because she's a Mendy. I'm here to serve every Sierra Leonean. We have to build a Sierra Leone. I think this has to come from you. And you must see that you continually talk to them about this. And by the, your mannerism, the way you walk around them, they will interpret, they will define whether you are actually telling them the truth. So this divisiveness has to be challenged up front. Then you go to the other issues of today. Why do we have a spiral in, in food prices, fuel prices? I think we can head, challenge some of this head on. The government of the day has said that it has invested heavily in education. Yes. Um, They've given even statistics as to yes. what has been done so far Wonderful. and the improvement so far. Yes. What would you do differently? During our time, we provided subsidies up to about 75%. We recruited many, many schools. Implementation was far better than the way we're implementing this free quality education. It's not about generating tons and tons of, of people. The quality is very important as well. Yes, enrollment has gone up. During our own time, enrollment also went up. During Pakaba's time, enrollment also went up. But we still had education challenges. Infrastructure education was very, very weak. Now, if at this time you have an exponential increase in, 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 in enrollment without appropriate infrastructure, and infrastructure includes the quality of teachers, the number the, and quality of teachers, the buildings, the number of classrooms. Today, yes, we have this concept where education is becoming more and more expensive in Sierra Leone. We need to address that. But the longer term one, which is a long term uh, uh, challenge, is the fact that we still have one of the highest illiteracy rates in the country, despite all the policy interventions. And that also needs to be challenged as we go on, starting from pre-primary school education to university. are illiterate. Mm. So we have, to, we have to find a way. Thank you very much. So the people have a choice. Thank you. Thank from you. June 24, 2023, Samura Kamara or Madabu. I think the choice has already been made. The choice has been made. It's Samura Kamara. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>